Not too long ago, Teslas were pretty much priced in luxury car territory, sometimes $50,000 and up. Not attainable to most common people, but now with millions of Teslas on the road, uh, you can find lots of nice pre owned examples like this 2023 Model 3 for well under $30,000. And that's pretty much the average price you're gonna pay for a decent used car these days. And what a great vehicle. Uh, low ownership costs, efficiency, technology, safety, performance. There are so many great features of the Tesla. And Tesla's been making EVs pretty much longer than almost anybody. And they've made more EVs pretty much than almost anybody. They lead in technology, they lead in features. So much good stuff to talk about. I'll try to make it quick. These are so different, I have a tendency to ramble on about these, ramble on about these Teslas for 20 minutes, but we'll try to make this video under 10 minutes. Let's see if we can do it. So this is a 2023 Model 3 rear wheel drive. It uses LFP batteries, which is battery technology, currently not available in new Teslas as of uh, September 2025, but I think we'll probably see them return to the US market. Uh, mostly LFP batteries are made in China, and for uh, the new EV tax credits, they wouldn't qualify for the EV tax credits, they have to be US-based batteries. So Tesla moved away from them, but I think now that those EV tax credits are gonna end at the end of this month, we'll see the LFP batteries return to Tesla products. Since no engine up here, we have a frunk, which gives you uh, extra cargo space. It's also a safety feature. This has amazing active and passive safety features. Uh, the reason why this makes it safer is you have a crumple zone that's 60% larger than a vehicle with an engine up front. So you have all that space to absorb cross energy in a frontal collision. We have a power operated trunk and they started putting heat pumps in the Model 3 in 2021. So if you drive in colder climates, you probably want to look at a Model 3 2021 or newer like this one uh, because the heat pumps make these way more uh, efficient in colder weather. You can see lots of storage and uh, we have that sub trunk right there, which is even more uh, cargo space. Even, the even though the Model 3 is considered a compact, it generally has more interior space than a comparable gas-powered compact vehicle. Since you don't have drive shafts, exhaust system, gas tanks, uh, all the complexity of a gas car going through the floor allows you to free up interior space for the passengers. Look how much headroom I have. Look how much legroom I have. Great Uber lift vehicle with these nice glass roof panels to allow lots of natural light inside. Very, very nice. Nice, spacious front seat accommodations, wireless charging pad, big screen. You notice there's not a lot of buttons and knobs. That's by design. The majority of the functionality is in the screen. You can also do a lot of voice commands. There's 150 different voice commands. So you can operate the wipers, adjust the climate control, heated seats, all of voice commands. So you don't, off, you don't have to swipe through the screen to do everything like people say. A lot of people don't understand these Teslas, but I've been buying and selling these Teslas for years. I've bought and sold hundreds of them, and I have owned a Model 3 for myself for over three years. So I'm pretty familiar with them. We have excellent parking cameras for situational awareness. This has cameras all the way around it, really making this thing uh, like, a rolling, uh, like a rolling dash camera. You can put a, a USB port, uh, drive right into the glove compartment and it will record all movement around the vehicle while the vehicle is parked when you have sentry mode on. You can pull up live camera views and record stuff on demand and it will automatically record any suspicious activity or damage to your vehicle. And then while you're driving, you have a 360 dash cam. So any accidents, anything that happens, you get pulled over and it's, you're not at fault, you have 100% proof of all these cameras around it. And that also acts with the, uh, these cameras also help operate the amazing autopilot system, which is traffic work cruise control, which allows the vehicle to steer, brake, and accelerate in this lane. And then it is also upgradable to full self-driving. Uh, this has hardware three, so it doesn't have the latest uh, full self-driving hardware. You'd have to buy a 2024 or newer Model 3. The hardware 3 is still pretty good. I have full self-driving in my Tesla. Uh, this does not have the software, so you'd have to subscribe to it for $99 a month or pay $8,000, but it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, I've been using the full self-driving for three years. Three years ago, it was wonky. It was only for nerdy people like me because it needed a lot of supervision. There was constant interventions and taking over. Not anymore, it's progressed. I have a 10 mile commute both ways. I rarely touch the wheel. I say, take me home, take me to work, or take me to wherever I want to go, the Safeway, you know, the donut shop, the dry cleaner. And I just sit here and basically I have my own personal chauffeur. All it requires me to do is look out the window and make sure we're safe. There's a camera here. So if I start spacing out and looking at, you know, the scenery, or I look at the screen too long, it will warn me saying, hey, pay attention. And sometimes it's easy to get comfortable <laughs> in the Teslas because you have the heated seats on, you had a long day at work, <laughs> you're in stop and go traffic, you start to get too comfortable and when you're not driving, you're not doing anything, it's easy to start getting a little sleepy and I've been uh, 
it, 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 it has attention awareness, so if you start getting drowsy, it says, hey, pay attention. So a lot of great features. See, yeah, this is why I can talk so long about these Teslas. I haven't really scratched the surface. But see some of our other videos. I have tons of videos on our YouTube page about these Teslas. You have theater mode, so a premium connectivity, which is basically LTE, uh, solid data, data beam to the vehicle, you can stream music. You can't uh, stream uh, videos while you're driving, but while you're parked, supercharging, things like that. You have the toy box for the silly things like the whoopee cushion. You have the boom box where you can change the sound of your horn. You can talk through the horn. You can make the horn sound like a goat. Multi-track recorder. Tesla's constantly adding features and apps to the vehicle. We have heated seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, rear heated seats are available. You can unlock them for like $200. <laughs> Software unlock. Yeah, I can go on and on. So let's talk about the LFP batteries before we end this video, because uh, that's probably a big difference. So LFP batteries, um, if we go over here and we talk, look at the vehicle, uh, high voltage battery type lithium iron phosphate, also known as LFP. Uh, most uh, most uh, battery, the batteries they use in uh, brand new Teslas right now are lithium ion batteries. Generally, those are more energy dense. Uh, they offer better performance. Um, they can hold, you know, they can hold more energy for their size, but they're also more expensive, a lot more expensive. Uh, so, uh, so that's why Tesla like to put those in their more, uh, more uh, entry level products like this Model Three. But the one thing about LFP batteries that it has over lithium iron, ba lithium ion batteries, is uh, see right here. You can charge it to 100%. Lithium ion batteries only like to be charged to 80% for daily use. But it gives you a warning. We recommend keeping your charge limit at 100% and charging fully once per week to 100%. So it's quite the opposite. If I was in my Tesla, my older Model 3 has lithium ion batteries. If I do that, it'll say, hey, warning, charging to 100% can degrade your battery. It's okay to charge to 100% every once in a while for like a road trip or something like that. But for daily use with lithium ion batteries, they recommend charging to 80%. So you're really not getting your full EPA range on your Tesla. If your Tesla has a 300 mile range, you can only charge it to 80%. Well, guess what? Your 20% has been knocked off that 300 mile range. With LFP equipped Teslas, you can charge to 100% and not worry about your battery's health. In fact, it's good for it. And they also say LFP batteries have the potential to last longer than lithium ion batteries, maybe even twice as long. Uh, it's coming out now. You know, Teslas have been out for quite a while. Uh, Tesla's uh, batteries hold up really well. Uh, Tesla is now saying that, you know, at 200,000 miles, you're going to lose about 10% battery capacity. It's not too bad. So after 200,000 miles, you only, you know, you're only losing 10% uh, battery capacity. I mean, there's Teslas out there with two, three, four, 500,000 miles in the original batteries. Uh, Teslas are, Teslas and EVs are far less complex than internal combustion engine vehicles. And, Internal combustion engine cars are more complex than ever. They have supercharging, turbocharging, hybrid systems, all these wires. We're seeing more problems than ever. I mean, if you look at a gas engine from the 1960s and 70s, they are just so simple. And then you look at the complexity of gas engines today. That's where I think we've just pretty much pushed gas engines to the limit. They've been around for 100 years. They are just too complex where an EV, a battery and electric motors is far simpler, less complexity. That's why EVs uh, maintenance costs are far less. In fact, the Model 3 is pretty much the lowest maintenance cost over a 10 year period or five year period than any other vehicle on the road, even like a Toyota Corolla. And this gives you a lot more luxury than the Toyota Corolla performance, zero to 60 under six seconds. Uh, you have this amazing screen, heated seats. This is a luxury sedan. You'd compare this like a BMW, 3 Series or a Mercedes-Benz C-Class, not a Toyota Corolla or Honda Civic. Um, and on the pre-owned market, you know, this thing is pretty much priced as a, you know, high-end like Civic or Corolla. What would you rather have? Uh, I'd probably <laughs> rather have this. <laughs> well, thanks for this walk, joining me on this walk around video. We're, we're, we are Wastecar Ford. We've been in business 103 years. Wow, long time. We're located in Auburn, Washington, serving the greater Seattle Tacoma area. We sell new Fords new Azuzus and a very wide variety, as you can see, of pre-owned uh, vehicles, including a lot of pre-owned Teslas. I think we have like eight pre-owned Teslas right now. Uh, we buy what sells on the used market and people love buying uh, Teslas, uh, despite you know what you hear 
Uh, the Model Y is the best-selling vehicle in the world for 23-24. Not best-selling EV, best-selling vehicle in the world. EVs are going mainstream, and one of the top EV brands, in my opinion, and probably a lot of other people's opinion, is Tesla, for very good reason. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.